Now, who would have thought that an Ash Guard could be this long? But there are mechanics, tips, and tricks lots of people don't know about, and because she is a very popular champion, why don't we talk about everything you need to know about the Frost Archer? What's up, Game Leaper? I'm the Jizz. Oh, and by the end of this guide, you will know everything about Ash. Abilities, tips, tricks, mechanics, the laning phase, runes, builds, you name it. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure to smash that like button and let's get into it. So let's start by talking about Ash's passive and her abilities. So your passive is called Frost Shot, and there are two parts. The first is actually called Frost Shot, and whenever you hit an enemy with an auto attack or an ability, you apply Frost. This slows that target, and your auto attacks against targets with Frost will deal more damage based on your critical strike chance. But if you do actually crit an enemy, that slow actually doubles in strength, but only lasts for a second. And this is the second part of your passive, Critical Slow. Now your Q, Ranger's Focus, is by far the most important ability to master. The reason it's so important is because this is your DPS. Now it has a passive and an active. The passive means that every time you auto attack an enemy, you get a stack of focus. Now at four stacks, you can then activate your Q, and this gives you bonus attack speed that scales with the number of points in your ranger's focus, and also means that when you auto attack, you fire a flurry of five arrows, with each arrow dealing modified damage based off your AD. Now each arrow in this flurry applies the slow from your passive, and the bonus damage from frost shot is calculated individually per arrow. Now your Q has no cooldown, and one of the most important points to remember is that when you activate your Q, it resets your auto attack timer. So the most attacking combo you have is to auto attack to get to four stacks of focus, and then you Q so you can auto attack again immediately. This increases your damage output, and it's something you have to master if you want to be a great Ash player. Just don't waste your flurries if an enemy champion like Leona has a W going, or Samira has a Blade Whirl, of course, because your damage will be either reduced or just completely nullified. Now your W, Volley, this is your main poke tool in lane. So you fire anywhere from 7 to 11 arrows, depending on your Volley's rank, in a cone in the target direction. Now this cone gets wider with more points than your W, but its range always stays at 1200. This is double your auto attack range, which is why it's such an amazing form of poke. Now each arrow applies critical slow from your passive to enemy champions hit, and deals physical damage increased by your AD. So ideally, you would want to try hit both the enemy AD carry and support, but sometimes this won't be possible. So one trick you can do is to last hit a minion with your W and damage one of your opponents at the same time. And it's important to note that when an arrow from your volley hits a target, that's it. It doesn't continue traveling even if you kill a target. So with this in mind, if an enemy champion was standing directly behind a minion you wanted to last hit, you can last hit that minion to create space so you can then W and hit that enemy champion. Now a couple of other important tips, auto attacking before or after your volley is a great way of increasing your damage output. So if an enemy champion is close to you, auto attack and W. Your W cancels your auto attack animation so it's a very clean and quick way of trading. Or if they are just out of auto attack range, W to critically slow them, auto attack and back off. And you can W flash. So if you need to slow an enemy champion for a gank or if you need to W flash to last hit a kill, do it. Keep in mind as well that your volley does cost 70 mana, and in the early game, this is a quarter of your mana pool, so you typically always want to leave yourself with enough mana to W and Q, which costs 50 mana in case a fight breaks out, or if you just want to wave clear. Now your E, Hawk Shot, this is your scouting tool. So over time, you will get a Hawk Shot charge, up to two of these. So when you have a charge of it, you can send a Hawk Spirit in the target direction, which gives you and your teammates sight of the area it is passing over. Now when it reaches its destination or the edge of the map, it will detonate and give you vision of the that area for five seconds. Now your hawk shot is global. It can cover the whole map. This allows you to spot enemy laners walking back to lane, the enemy jungler doing their topside camps, the enemy team doing dragons and barons later on, and it will actually ping enemy champions you didn't already have vision of, which lasts for close to three seconds. But remember, it will detonate where your cursor is when you press E. So when you and your teammates are about to fight a dragon or baron, or you're about to get a gank in the bot lane, fire your arrow so it detonates over those fog of war areas so it gives you vision of the enemy champions for those five seconds. This can be game winning. Now, five more tips to be aware of. Number one, if you know a fight is going to happen soon, don't waste your hawk shot. You only get two charges of your E at a time, so use them wisely. Number two, your hawk shot will give you an assist if you reveal unseen enemies and they die within 10 seconds of being spotted. Number three, your hawk shot can be blocked by Samira's blade well and Yasuo's wind wall, but funnily enough, Brom's Unbreakable will not stop it. Number four, your E does not cost any mana. And number five, your E does not actually reveal stealth units like Team Rengai Shaco. Now your ultimate, your Enchanted Crystal Arrow. This is the ability that will get you honored or reported. So for 100 mana, you fire a big ass arrow of ice in the target direction. Again, this has global range, just like your Hawk Shot, and it explodes when it hits an enemy champion, stunning them for anywhere from one second up to three and a half seconds, depending on how far your ultimate traveled. Now it grants sight of the area it's traveling over and the area around the enemy champion it hits. Enemy champions near the explosion will cop 50% of the damage and be slowed. 
But your ultimate, despite being one of the most impactful abilities in the game, is actually very simple to understand. You have two reasons for using it, to catch out an enemy champion or to peel yourself. So if your support goes in and stuns the enemy AD carry, use your ultimate to chain CC that target. If you know the enemy AD carry is on their own and you want to fight them, you can use your ultimate to catch them off guard. If there is a big 3v3 at Rift Herald, throw your ultimate in that direction because you never know, it might make or break that fight. If the enemy Z jumps on you, use your ultimate to stun him so you can potentially run away. So it's never about the stun duration, whether it's one second or three and a half, no one cares. It's the fact it stuns them that's the important effect we are after. So using it at close range, max range, nothing to worry about. Now one last tip for your ultimate, try use it from Fog of War. If the enemy team doesn't know you have sent your arrow somewhere, the less chance they have of avoiding it. So you might want to control water brush before sending it, or using it at a base to send up to the top lane or through the mid lane. The enemy team obviously won't see it until it actually appears in that lane. It's also good to keep in mind that you cannot R flash. I mean you could do to tilt your team, but yeah. So in Mastering Ash's path, passive and abilities, let's talk about the laning phase and your skill order. Now Ash is an amazing lane bully. She has the second highest range out of all the AD carries and as we touched on earlier, her volley's range and radius gives you a great amount of agency. This is why you always want to skill your W at level 1 and this is the ability you max first. It's also great for invades as is your passive because of the slow, so look to be aggressive in the early going. Now when level 2 hits, you have two options of course, your Q or your E. Now your Q is great if you have the push and you are looking to fight the enemy champions, but if you are the ones getting pushed in and farming under your tower, getting your hawk shot can be extremely valuable because scouting for the enemy jungler can tell you if you are going to get dived or ganked. It's not like you need your Q if you're just focusing on last hitting safely. But let's say you did get your Q at level 2, well then you have two choices for level 3, W or E. Again, if you are not scared of the enemy jungler or you know where they are, there isn't much point in getting your hawk shot. It's better in these situations to put another point in your volley so you can bully your opponents even more. But let's say at level 2, you have your W and E skilled. Well at level 3, you can put another point in your W and neglect your Q if the enemy bot lane is playing at max range and very passive. For example, you might be playing against a Caitlyn Soraka lane where the chances of actually getting in range to auto attack and use your range's focus are very low. It really depends on the lane state and the champions you are against, including the enemy jungler. Just make sure when level 4 rocks up, you have at least one point in all of your basic abilities and after that, max W like we said, your Q next and then your E and obviously put a point in your ultimate at 6, 11 and 16. Now in terms of your runes on Ash, very simple. There is one page at the moment that is causing havoc in the bot lane. So take Hail of Blades as your keystone. This is unreal for Ash because the extra attack speed you get synergizes so well with your frost and this allows you to quickly stack your focus. So at the end of your Hail of Blades attacks, you can use your Q to continue trading. Then take Cheap Shot because this increases your damage to movement impaired champions. So this works great with all your slows and your ultimate stun. Then Eyeball Collection and Ravenous Hunter. And for your secondary tree, take Biscuit Delivery so you don't go Um at level 1. And then Approach Velocity because this enables you to gap close to enemy champions who are trying to escape your end the slows and it's also useful because if you ult someone outside of your auto attack range you can quickly close that space with that extra movement speed. For your minor runes, take attack speed and adaptive force always and then armor or magic resist depending on the matchup. Now in terms of items, always start with a longsword and three pots. Now the idea behind the longsword start is that you hit harder than with a Doran's blade. The HP and life steal you give up is made up by your three health pots and it makes noon quiver which is always your first major purchase only 950 gold. Now you can buy berserkers greaves instead if you have 1100 gold on your first base and these will be almost needed if you don't have your flash or second summoner spell. But if you don't need the movement speed and kite from Greaves, get a Noon Quiver and build this into a mortal shield bow. But if you didn't buy Greaves, you can buy plated steel cats, but obviously don't do this if the real enemy threats are mages. Now after shield bow for your second and third major items, you have a choice of four items. Now Wits End is the most popular and is great against AP heavy teams. This should be built either second or third, even if the enemy team doesn't have a lot of AP because the on hit and attack speed, these are perfect. Ginsu's Rage Blade is great for all around DPS and this should be built either before or after wit's end but sometimes Phantom Dancer is great if you feel as if you need the movement speed to kite the enemy team and if you do build PD build Ginsu's afterwards or you could opt for Runan's Hurricane if the enemy team is very melee centric so the more short range they are the more valuable Runan's becomes and the bolts also proc of your flurries you would also buy Ginsu's after Runan's as well now as for the rest of your build it depends on the enemy team you have Guardian's Angel for damage armor and the passive you have Randuin's Omen which is great against crit based champions you can build Lord Dominance regards if the enemy team has a lot of armor. You can build Black Cleaver for more kite and because of the carved passive procs off your ranger's focus, great for shredding tanks, especially with Runans. You can buy Mortal Reminder for the Grievous Wounds and attack speed and movement speed, or Kenpunk Chainsword for the same anti-healing but for a bit more survivability, or you can buy QSS and then Mercurial Scimitar to survive that deadly crowd control. It really just depends on the game you are in. Now in terms of summoner spells, always run Flash, and then you have two options for your second spell. Heal is the most reliable and consistent. It's great to 
escape, but also great to catch up to enemy champions who you have slowed. And then you have Cleanse, which is ideal against heavy CC bot lanes and teams in general. Just remember you won't get the movement speed you get from heal. So take these tips and tricks, the information, the runes, the builds into your games. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. And on your way out, be sure to check out the Game Week website for the most up to meta exclusive content in the world. If you want to master a champion or role or just learn how the best do what they do, then sign up. Links in the description or comment section. And until tomorrow's video, this has been the G. Oh.